Hi everyone. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to perform parallel analysis in the context of exploratory factor analysis when using SPSS. Now, SPSS does not have any built-in features for carrying out this particular analysis, uh, but there are some utilities that are available online. Uh, one of them, which is the one I'm going to be highlighting in this particular video, is a parallel analysis engine. Uh, another option is to use some syntax that's been written or some version of that syntax that's been written by Brian O'Connor. Uh, so in this video, I'll be focusing in on the web utility. In another video, I will be uh, discussing the use of that syntax. So we'll start off just kind of showing you um, a set of data right here. This is actually some simulated data based on the correlations and uh, other descriptives that are presented in an article by uh, Finch and West from 1997. And basically what uh, this data represents are items associated with a self-monitoring scale. And in that particular uh, uh, article, when they were re uh, analyzing the data, they were basically uh, kind of testing a three-factor solution. Now, most of the time in the context of exploratory factor analysis, or I should say oftentimes in the context of exploratory factor analysis, researchers don't have an a priori conception of how many factors may account for the interrelationships among a set of measured variables. And so what they uh, have to do is they uh, go through a process of um, ex exploring the data, so to speak, in order to come up with a determination of the number of factors. And then from that, uh, forcing that solution and then rotating uh, for the purposes of interpretation. So the uh, the use of parallel analysis is handy because uh, it is one approach that you can use to determine the number of factors. And in fact, it's one of the more preferred approaches to determining the number of factors. So in my walkthrough, I'm going to be uh, analyzing this data set that you see on your screen. And you can obtain a copy of this data set uh, and also kind of follow along with um, uh, more of a uh, narrative description, if you will, uh, by following the link that's provided underneath the video description. So. I will show you briefly, too, uh, the website that I'm talking about. This is it right here. Uh, basically, if you go to analytics.gonzaga.edu forward slash parallel engine forward slash, it will take you to this website. And this is where we will be generating uh, random eigenvalues uh, for the purpose of uh, comparing them against the eigenvalues from our data. So the first step in all this is basically to run uh, just an initial analysis uh, to generate those random eigenvalues. And I will say, too, that there's actually two kind of versions of parallel analysis uh, that are out there. One version uh, is the more classic version using Horn's uh, uh, parallel analysis uh, approach. And basically, that involves uh, generating a set of eigenvalues uh, from an unreduced correlation matrix. So fundamentally, that involves uh, performing a principal components analysis uh, on your data and then extracting those the eigenvalues for those principal components. Uh, and then when you run the uh, parallel analysis or uh, generate those simulated eigenvalues, you're also operating the under the assumption uh, that you are using principal components analysis. So you're basically comparing the randomly generated eigenvalues against the eigenvalues uh, from your data. So that's the classic approach. Then there's another approach, which is a variation on that. Uh, and that approach basically involves conducting a parallel analysis on a reduced correlation matrix. So uh, typically that entails um, you know, performing the um, initial extraction, if you will, using uh, something like principal axis factoring and then generating random uh, eigenvalues with that particular extraction method and then making the comparison. So for this particular demonstration, I'm going to be focusing in on the principal components uh, based approach. So we'll start off with uh, basically going to analyze, we'll go down to dimension reduction and then uh, click on factor right here. 
And you can see uh, in our box, these are basically the labels uh, for each of the uh, the uh, items. And so these are the items themselves, um, or the actual uh, wording of the items uh, that you see right here. But these are basically the uh, variables that you see in the data set. So I'm going to move them over to this variables box right here. And then under the uh, descript descriptives um, tab, I'm going to select univariate descriptives. Some of the other things I typically uh, select, um, such as uh, you know correlation matrix to coefficients, determinant, uh, KMO and Bartlett's test, uh, anti-image correlations, uh, reproduced correlations, and so forth. Um, you know, you can select those if you want to. Um, uh, these actually have some diagnostic value, particularly the determinant and KMO and Bartlett's test. I'm not going to be talking about it in this video. The main thing I wanted to highlight is just clicking on the univariate descriptives, because one of the things that you're going to need uh, when you are uh, running your analysis is the sample size. Now, this data set right here has a complete set of data, so there's no missing data. But in those cases where you have um, missing values on uh, some of your variables, uh, basically, when you run the principal components analysis, by default, the program is going to generate um, um, a solution based uh, following list-wise deletion. So in other words, any cases that have missing data on any of your variables are going to be kicked out. And so the analysis will be performed using only those cases that have complete data. And so you'll need that sample size. And so this is just an easy way to obtain that right there. So uh, we'll click on continue right here. Then uh, under extraction, you, you'll see the default uh, method is set for principal components. We're going to leave that uh, right there set. Um, I'll also go ahead and just uh, click on screen plot so we can kind of just briefly visualize it. Um, you'll see under the extraction um, uh, option, you'll see it says based on eigenvalue, eigenvalues uh, greater than one. That is the classic um, eigenvalue cutoff rule or uh, or uh, Kaiser criterion. Uh, this is not really one of the more uh, desirable approaches to determining the number of factors. In fact, it has a, uh, a, a substantial problems associated with both conceptually and empirically. Uh, one of those uh, major problems is a, is a tendency to overfactor. So, uh, but nevertheless, we'll leave it on this default uh, because we're re really not going to be uh, so much interested in what factors are are chosen by this method, we're going to be interested in the complete set of eigenvalues that are generated uh, using the PCA method. So we'll click on continue right here and then click on OK and take a look at our output. So you'll see uh, looking at the first table, you'll see with our descriptive statistics up here, you'll see our total effect of sample size. And it's going to be the same for all of our other variables. Uh, so it's uh, 2,951. And so uh, just, again, keep in mind that if you happen to have missing data and you're leaving it on the list-wise deletion option, uh, you're still going to end up with the full set of cases. But, uh, you know, the total effect of sample size might be less than the number of rows that you have in your data set. But again, we have 2,951 cases. If I scroll down, this was just some of the other stuff that I had selected. So we're going to just kind of go uh, past that. And we'll scroll down, and you'll see that we have this table uh, uh, that contains our, our uh, PCA results right here. So in the total column right here, you'll see that we have uh, the eigenvalues associated with our components. The number of components, you'll see that we've got uh, 12 components right here, the number of components is going to equal the total number of measured variables or items, so to speak, uh, in our data set. So each of those components um, uh, has an eigenvalue associated with them. And the extraction process is such that the first uh, principal component will explain the most of the total variation in the set of items. So you'll see that the first eigenvalue will be the largest value, and you can see the percentage of variance right here is 25.48. The next eigenvalue that you see right here is 1.985, so obviously that's less than the first one. And you'll see that we account for about 16.5% of the variation. The third eigenvalue is still less than the, the previous two, and it's 1.2, and you can see the percentage of variance right here. And so you can see that 
essentially the size of the eigenvalues are decreasing as we move from the first to the last. And, and uh, in the same way, the percentage of variance uh, decreases as well. And essentially the idea is in components analysis is to reduce um, uh, to uh, basically try to account for the total variation in a set of measured variables uh, with and and the I ultimately the idea is to try to kind of come up with a more parsimonious representation of the data rather than maintaining all 12 uh, components we want to select a subset of those that explain sort of the most with the least um, that's kind of the the general idea behind that so we've got our Total effective sample size, again, which is going back up here again, it's the uh, 2,951. If I go to the website right here, then you'll see that things that, to put in here include the number of variables. So right up here, number of variables in your data set, which was 12. Uh, and so when I hit enter, you'll see that, you know, things start to change on the right. Automatically, as I make changes on the left, things change on the right. In terms of the sample size, just remember our number, which is 2,951. So right here, I'll type in 2,951 for the sample size. Uh, then you'll see it says type of analysis. And there are actually two types right here, but we're going to leave this set for principal components. We'll scroll down a little bit further, and then you'll see that we've got this option for number of random correlation matrices to generate. So in parallel analysis, the basic uh, approach in terms of simulation is to assume that you have uncorrelated variants. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And then what happens is, is that we generate a large number of correlation matrices uh, under the assumption that those variants are uncorrelated uh, and also assuming the, the same number of variables and the same sample size. And so you just do that repeatedly. And then from that, uh, from those uh, those uh, different um, uh, correlation matrices, you essentially are extracting um, a principal component solution. You're taking the mean uh, of the eigenvalues across those correlation matrices, or you might take, say, the 95th percentile of those, and then those are our randomly generated eigenvalues that ultimately are compared against our data. So by default, we have 100 eigenvalue, uh, 100 uh, random correlation matrices uh, that are set to generate. We're going to actually going to increase this to 1,000 right here. And you'll see it's kind of thinking on the right. You'll see by default, in terms of the percentile of eigenvalues, the default is the 95th percentile. And you'll also see that you have a little seed number right here as well. And the seed number is more useful in those cases if you want to change that and you want to kind of redo the analysis, um, you can you can certainly do that. And then if you came back and you called up the same seed number with the same specifications, you should end up with the same values on the right. But as you can see right here, we've got, it says component or factor, and then we have mean eigenvalue and percentile eigenvalue right here. So those columns. So the mean eigenvalue is just basically taking the, the mean of the eigenvalues across those uh, hundred uh, across those uh, thousand uh, correlation matrices for uh, and so you've got it for each component so you can see for component one the mean uh, of the randomly generated eigenvalues is 1.03905 for the second one is 1.077903 the third one 1.057142 and so forth and you can see that these eigenvalues are also decreasing, just like we saw decreases with um, with our data, but the decreases are much less substantial. Uh, if you wanted to use the percentile eigenvalue as a comparison, uh, you could certainly do that as well. And, and basically, they're following the same principle. So, with that in mind, then what we can do is, you know, if we go back to our data set, uh, our excuse me, our output right here, I'll kind of scroll down and you'll notice that in terms of the eigenvalues, we've got the first one is 3.059, the second one is 1.1985, the third one is 1.2, and then you'll see uh, it drops to 0.862. So when we look back at the uh, randomly generated eigenvalues, what we'll find is that, uh, that uh, the eigenvalues from our data 
uh, for the first three components exceeds those randomly generated eigenvalues. But on the fourth component, uh, the randomly generated eigenvalue actually exceeds the eigenvalue from our data. So here you can see, uh, I've gone ahead and just kind of uh, uh, written up uh, the eigenvalues from our data and those that are random, uh, just to keep kind of uh, from scrolling, uh, going back and forth between screens. So the first eigenvalue from our data, the 3.059, that's this number right here, and the corresponding random eigenvalue is 1.039. Uh, so you can see it exceeds that number. And then if we go to uh, the second, uh, component right here, the data, uh, the eigenvalue from our data is 1.985. The randomly generated eigenvalue is 1.0779. Then for the third one, you can see that we have eigenvalue of 1.2 and the randomly generated eigenvalue is 1.05142. Uh, and then the third, the fourth one, we have 0.862 right here and that's less than the randomly generated eigenvalues. And then all of the remaining uh, ran, uh, um, randomly generated eigenvalues are going to be um, in excess of the eigenvalues from our data. So what that basically tells us then is that we need to break or form a break right here and we uh, end up maintaining those components um, for the first, uh, basically the first three components. So in a nutshell, this is our breakpoint right here and we uh, maintain components one through three. So um, there you go. That's just kind of a general overview of how you perform uh, parallel analysis uh, using that engine uh, along with SPSS. So I hope you found this uh, demonstration useful and uh, thanks for watching.